Hare Krishna. Can you guys all hear Prabhu? I'm not able to hear Prabhu. Same thing here, Krishna. Hare Krishna. We can't hear. No, we can't. We cannot oh, hear. I, we cannot hear. Okay. I'm like, it's we mine. We cannot hear at all. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah, we can hear you, Prabhu, now. Sorry, my microphone was on mute. No, that's what. So, looks like the Mangalacharan did not get recorded. But we no, did. nothing. Yeah. Yeah, but we already did the Mangalacharan. So uh, it's okay if it was not recorded. Um, so I was I was reading the Mangalacharan or reciting the Mangalacharan. And then we um, paid our uh, respects to His Holiness Gopal Krishna Swami Maharaj, who left, his, left this planet last week. So that's what we did. Unfortunately, my mic was on mute, not I was... My mistake. So we will. Okay. Hmm. What are we supposed to do? Okay. Never mind. So I will just uh, share the slides and we'll go from there. Yeah, sorry about that. So, Sri Bhakti Samrit Sindhu by Sri Rupa Goswami Prabhupada, English Summary Study, Nectar of Devotion by His Divine Grace Abhay Charnaravind Bhakti Vedanta Swami Sri Prabhupada. Shri Shri Shad Goswami Ashtaka. Krishna Kirtana Gana Nartana Paro Prema Mritambo Nidhi Dhira Dhira Jana Priya Priya Karo Nirmatsara Pujito Shri Chaitanya Kripa Bharo Bhuvi Bhuvo Bharava Vande Rupa Sanatana Raghu Juga Shri Jeeva Gopalako Nana Shastra Vicharanaika Nipuno Saddharma Samsthapako Lokanam Hitakarino Tribhuvane Manyo Sharanyakaro Radha Krishna Padaravinda Bhajana Nandena Mattaliko Vande Rupa Sanatana Raghu Yugaho 
श्री जीव गोपाल ओके सो लेट अस स्टार्ट विद दी मटेरियल फॉर टुडे वी हैव अ लॉट ऑफ मटेरियल टू गो ओवर सो टुडे वी विल स्किप द की वर्स मेमोराइजेशन एंड गो स्ट्रेट टू द मटेरियल ओके so we were discussing from last week so please pay very careful attention actually today's class is very important for understanding some very important concept so uh, those who are not attending right now i will send a message that they must watch the class recording to get a very uh, important some very important concepts very clear in their head so those of you are here are that's good you can ask questions if if that's the advantage of zoom uh, compared to a youtube recording so this we had discussed last time can you see the sharing never okay good yes sir bhuji thanks so we discussed that absorption in shri krishna is the most important aspect and compared to mechanical vaidhi bhakti uh mechanical vaidhi bhakti is no good really it may be good in the beginning but uh long term it is not good and you know one should not make it so gradual uh elevation or graduation from mechanical to absorbed vaidhi bhakti that it becomes completely zero so one should make strong efforts to move towards absorbed vaidhi bhakti and at some point of time uh one may uh, develop uh, raga and we will talk about that but absorption is very important that was the point we discussed so uh then we had uh, yeah i'll skip this this whole long discussion on kama roopa ragatmika where um uh, there is that strong desire to make krishna happy and there are no limits to the extent of what one will do to make krishna happy so uh we discussed all of this and yeah this is the last topic which we had discussed um uh, is the uh, is that kama equal to prema prema eva goparam ramanam kama ittya agamat pratham that this uh deep prema this deep love for the gopis of the, of the gopis towards krishna is called as kama uh in one of the translations i saw that it is said that this kama is called as prema that completely changes the meaning the root is prema so that is why translations are very important and i have checked the translation carefully the prema is called as kama so the root the essence is prema the essence is not kama i hope you are getting so it is not that the essence is kama it is called as prema that's not correct the correct thing is the essence is prema and it is known as kama especially in this kama roopa ragatmika bhakti because there are no limits there are absolutely no limits in this if one wants to focus on the kama aspect then that is seen in kubja and that bhakti is not called kama roopa ragatmika there is a special name given by shri rup goswami kama praya which means that kama praya means that kama is first which means that that desire for union or for sambhoga is primary kama praya so that is why it is called kama praya rati that which is seen in kintu kubjayam but but kintu means but that kama praya rati seen in kubja uh, is uh, 
or that rati which is seen in kubja which is is called as kama praya that is what is being said here so we discussed this now we go into verse number 288 which is sambandha rupa ragatmika bhakti so that concluded the previous slide concluded the discussion on kama rupa ragatmika bhakti and i want to quickly cover sambandha rupa ragatmika bhakti which is the other branch of ragatmika bhakti so there were two branches kama rupa and sambandha rupa so sambandha rupa uh, bhakti this is directly from verse number 288 i have taken this portions two portions of the verse that sambandha rupa govinde pitritva adya abhimanita pitritva adi abhimanita so let us break this down those who have a pitritva pitritva means like uh, like uh, fatherly or father like you know pitritva that feeling of being a father pitritva adi this adi word is very important etc abhimanita that sense of abhiman or that sense of identity is there that i am the father i am the friend i am the das so uh, towards govinda are called sambandha rupa or sambandha rupa ragatmika bhaktas so etc adi means parent friend servant those are the three other relationships so what basically it is being said here that there is a formal sambandh there is a formal relationship of a parent friend or a servant now it is not like that formality has to be established through a you know a document or a signature when your child is born he is born you know by the way you get a birth certificate but that birth certificate doesn't make you the child the child is there for the mother the child will always be the child now one can say okay child is born from mother and father so there is that connection there is that you know you can say khoon ka rishta blood relationship what about friend or servant there is no blood relationship in that but still it is a for that is true there is no blood relationship but there is a uh, it is a formally acknowledged relationship you can go and say to somebody he is my friend the point of kama rupa is that there is no formal relationship so here there is a formal relationship between um, you know the two but please keep in mind today we will discuss this concept of formal informal it is doesn't mean that the there has to be formality in the relationship this just happens to be the word formal i am using please take very careful attention i am just using this word formal but it has a different context as being forma formal like formality when you have to have etiquette or some kind of protocol etc like you knock the door and go a very close friend will never knock the door he will just you know blast in uh so like that it is a very informal relationship but that relationship has a name has a title associated with it in the kama rupa ragatmika bhakti there is no from our material world stand standpoint there is no formal title so therefore the queens of dwarka even though they are in madhurya rasa so madhurya ras does not mean it is automatically kama rupa ragatmika madhurya ras can also be in kama rupa ragatmika or it can be in sambandha rupa ragatmika the gopis are in madhurya ras they are kama rupa ragatmika whereas the queens of dwarka they are also in madhurya ras but they are in sambandha rupa ragatmika or they could be classified as okay i take that back they are not sambandha rupa ragatmika because they are not vrajvasis but they have a sambandha they 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 are not uh, without that sambandha so that if at all you have to classify them you would put them in the category of somebody who has a sambandha with krishna it is still not sambandha rupa ragatmika because another condition is falsified of being vrajvasi if you remember uh, one of the de the the definition of ragatmika bhaktas are vrajvasi janadishu that they are the ones who are living in vraj 
So queens of Dwarka are not Vrajvasis. Because of that, that is not Ragatmika, but it is still Sambandha related. Okay, so I just want to clarify that. So these devotees, the first point is that they have a Sambandha Abhiman, that I am the father, I am the servant. They have that sense of identity. If somebody asks them, if you ask Hanumanji, who are you? He will say, I am the servant of Lord Ram. If you ask the gopis, who are you, to Lord Krishna, they will have no answer. They will just blink at you. Like a, you know, what you call deer in a headlights. They will have no answer. In their hearts, they have an answer that Shri Krishna is everything to us. He means the whole world, everything to us, but there is no formal name that they can associate themselves with. So that sense of relationship when one has with Shri Krishna, that is Sambandha Rupa. Now there is another, so I hope this first part is clear. Sambandha Rupa Govinde Pitritva Adi Abhimanita. Abhimanita means there is something to hold on to. And the second point is very important. This is where you will see that therefore they are only Rajavasis because it says Yadaishya Jnana Shunyatvad Esham Rage Pradhanata. So there are two points here. There is Jnana Shunyata. Jnana Shunyata of what? Yad Yadaishya means Yad Isha. Matlab Bhagavan ka jo Ishwaratva hai. His godliness is that gyan of that godliness is zero, is completely zero. So, yad isha gyan shunya tvad. So, they have the shunya tvad, they have that zero knowledgeness of the ishwaratva, of the godliness of Bhagavan, of yad. Yad means Govinda, which is in the previous line. But Raga Pradhanata, that attachment to Govinda is Pradhan, is predominant. That go attachment without Aishwarya Jnana. We have talked about this term, Aishwarya Jnana Pradhanata, which was there, if you remember, in the Pandavas. That's why they were not called as Ragatmika Bhaktas. Because they had Aishwarya Jnana Pradhanata. So here, in the definition of Sambandha Rupa, it is being specified that they have zero Aishwarya Gyan Pradhanata. On the contrary, they have Raga Pradhanata. Okay? So this is Sambandha Rupa Pragatmika Bhakti. There is a subtle point which I am skipping for sake of time, which is explaining that why the Vrishnis actually by Upalakshan, I will just say it, don't need to be bothered, but I will say it for completeness if somebody is watching on YouTube later and catches that I missed a point that the Vrishnis by Upalakshan mean Vrajvasis because of this line, Yad Isha Jnana Shunyatvad. The Vrishnis, the Yadu Vrishnis don't have this uh, uh, zero knowledge of being of Aishwarya of Bhagwan. They have that knowledge. Therefore, the Yadus are not Ragatmikas. Only by Upalakshan, only Vrajvasis are considered as uh, Sambandha Rupa Ragatmika. All right? Is this so far so good? Any questions on Sambandha Rupa Ragatmika? And I hope that the difference between Kama Rupa Ragatmika and Sambandha Rupa Ragatmika is also clear. In Kama Rupa Ragatmika, one of the first point is there is no Sambandha. There is no official or material level relationship title that you can assign. And the second thing is that there is no limit. In this one, there are some limits as we have discussed before. So, first of all, in these relationships, Sambhoga is not possible. Mother Yashoda will never do Sambhoga or union in that way with Krishna. Neither will Subala, Madhumangal, Sudama, the friends, and neither Rattak, Patrak, uh, the servants. So that for gopis, nothing is out of bounds. Nothing is out of scope. So here Sambhoga is out of scope, obviously. And plus many other things are out of scope. You know, like we said, if uh, 
the Lord uh, goes, Ram goes to Hanumanji, who is in pure Dasya Bhav, and says, give me the dust of your feet. Uh, Hanumanji will not agree with that. The gopis will agree. Okay, so that is for Dasya. Um, it doesn't apply, for example, to Vatsalya, because Nanda Baba's dust of his feet are, are on Krishna's head. There is this famous pastime of him carrying the shoes of Nanda Baba. So obviously the dust of Nanda Baba's feet is putting is being put on Krishna's head. But there are other things which are out of scope for Vatsalya. So uh, like that, there is something or the other which is out of scope. In Kamarupa, there is nothing out of scope. Okay. Any questions on Kamarupa and Sambandharupa Ragatmika? Okay. Fine. So we will continue. Now, please wake up. This is the important part of the discussion for today. Okay. So, uh, one second, I have to do something. Hmm. Okay. So the previous discussion may have given, so this was a question that was asked to me by one of the devotees and I want to make it very clear. So please pay first of all very careful attention. The next few slides are very important and then we will end the discussion around 6.20. So please pay attention for the next 20-25 minutes. Okay. And I know there is a program in Portland Temple today. So if you have to leave, you can leave, but uh, try to catch up or on the recording or something like that. So, uh, yeah, the previous discussion on so far may have given the impression that, you know, only bhakti that is done with absorption, that is called Raganuga Bhakti. Uh, or it is not possible to do Vaidhi Bhakti with absorption. That is not true at all. Okay. This is a huge misunderstanding. So what it means is that, um, first of all, it is not possible to do. So please listen to me. Don't focus on reading the slides. These slides are very, you know, I have written down a lot so that it is, you know, if you want to review it later, you can look at the slides and review, but try to pay attention to what I'm saying. So first of all, it is very hard, almost impossible to do Raganuga Bhakti without absorption in Krishna. Because by the core definition itself, Raganuga Bhakti means out of one's deep interest, deep attachment to Krishna Bhakti. So it is, it's very hard to do Raganuga Bhakti, except for pretenders who may just do it. Oh, Raganuga, I'm a Raganuga Bhakta, I'm doing it. Uh, and then, you know, uh, so except for pretenders, genuinely, if one is doing, it is not possible to do without absorption. But Vaidhi Bhakti can be done mechanically or with absorption. Okay. But what is the difference? This is the core difference which we will focus on in the next few slides, what I have written there. The difference is when you are, one is doing Vaidhi Bhakti, it is out of rules and regulations. It is out of scriptural injunctions. Scriptural inju injunctions mentioned where? Mentioned in the Shastra. So Shastra Sashanaiva, Shasanaiva, that was the definition of Vaidhi Bhakti. Out of the Shasan coming from the Shastra, the do's and don'ts. And where are the Shastras coming from? From the mouth of Bhagwan. So basically, there is this understanding of the godliness of Bhagwan in the mood of, therefore I have written, in the mood of awe and reverence. So Vaidhi Bhakti is in the mood of awe and reverence towards Bhagwan. That is one of the characteristics of Vaidhi Bhakti. But one can have deep absorption of the godly God. Okay. And one can have very deep absorption in, you know, the, the big, uh, the big God, 
you know, who is uh, all powerful, all beautiful, all uh, omniscient, all knowledgeable, everything. So he is the, you know, the supreme person, the Paramatma, the Param Purushottam Bhagavan. So one can definitely have a lot of absorption. That is what differentiates Vaidhi Bhakti from Raganuga. So, or in Vaidhi Bhakti, you can have absorption, but the mood is awe and reverence. That is the point. So, that is what I have said in some of these future bullets, that the core definition of Vaidhi Bhakti is it is done due to scriptural injunctions. Now, generally, people who start Vaidhi Bhakti do it or start it due to their faith in the scriptures. But there are fewer people like that. Most people start this Vaidhi Bhakti out of material motivations. And, uh, you know, Artha Artharthi, like Bhagavad Gita 7.16. There are four classes of people that come to me, Krishna says. Artha, Artharthi, Jigyasu and Jnani. So among those, Artha and Artharthi. Artha means that one who wants to get rid of a problem, like a disease. Artharthi means one who wants something. Like, you know, money, property, visa, wealth, good family, etc. So, Artharthi. So, those are the kind of people that come to Krishna and start the process of Vaidhi Bhakti. But, depending on their material situation, their Vaidhi Bhakti fluctuates when Bhagwan gives them what they want or takes away what they don't want, like takes away the disease or their suffering then Vaidhi Bhakti takes a back, back seat. Okay, then they, it becomes from absorbed to mechanical. When they really want something, like if you have some person who is suffering, a, some, let's say have a disease, or some family, close family person has a disease, Vaidhi Bhakti will be very, very absorbed. Bhagwan, please, please, please cure him. Very absorbed Vaidhi Bhakti. Once he is cured, problem solved, then it becomes mechanical. Because the core motivation was Artha or Artha, not uh, Lobha or not a Bhava for Bhagavan. So Vaidhi Bhakti can fluctuate. But even such people, uh, uh, you know, may have very deep attachment to the Lord, but they do it with a mood of awe and reverence. Because only a big God can solve the problem. If he is like your neighbor, powerless, why would you go and uh, worship him if he cannot solve your problems? So by definition, those that come with a material motivation have this awe and reverence because you would only ask for some benefits from somebody who is more powerful. So this Aishwarya Gyan Pradhanata is present in Vaidhi Bhakti. That is the point I am trying to make. But... Uh, such people, after many, many years of performing this with absorption, in that, with that Aishwarya Bhav, the godly Krishna, may transition into uh, doing it with a lot of attachment, always. Always doing it with a lot of attachment because of their years and years of practice. That is the stage of transitioning into Bhava Bhakti from the Vaidhi Bhakti path. You can also reach Bhava Bhakti from Vaidhi Bhakti. You do not have to go through Raganuga stage. So Raganuga Sadhana Bhakti and Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti are two parallel options or two parallel tracks and both lead to Bhava Bhakti. So it is definitely possible for somebody with who is uh, having a lot of attachment for the godly god. Godly god means one who has Aishwarya Gyan Pradhanata to transition into Bhava Bhakti stage and do it with a lot of absorption. Such devotees ultimately attain Dwarka Dham. Okay, not Vrindavan Dham. Dwarka Dham because that is where the godly god lives. Or a special area of Vrindavan as well, which I will discuss next, next class, not today. Okay, known as Goloka Vrindavan, but that I will discuss in the next class. All right. So this is how, or this is, I have, I hope I have shown you how, or some devotees can do Vaidhi Bhakti with full absorption, with full attachment. Now, Raganuga Bhakti, uh, 
why is it uh, limited or how is it or why is it limited only to Vrajavasis? So that is the that is what we are going to discuss now. So this is the Gaudiya Vaishnava definition of Ragatmika Bhakti. The meaning of the term Ragatmika is that Atmika means in their core Atma, their whole existence Atmika is full of Raga, is full of attachment to Shri Krishna. Okay, so um, what is the Gaud? So this is the uh, that's that's what Ragatmika would mean. But Gaudiya Vaishnava definition goes a little bit, makes it a little bit narrower, uh, more specific. So uh, some from the the Gaudiya Vaishnava Vaishnava definition says vrajavasi janadishu so that is the narrow narrowing that is done in gaudiya vaishnava definition some counter examples some examples of very absorbed devotees who do not fall in the vrajavasi category can somebody give some examples Who are fully absorbed, fully attached to the to Lord Krishna, but are not Vrajvasis. Rukmini Devi. Yes, very true. Rukmini Devi, Mother Devaki. Vidura. Vidura. Amen. Yes, so many. So, and to Lord Vishnu, for example, Narad Muni, and even to Lord Krishna. So there are so many examples of devotees. Can you say that Mother uh, Rukmini or Narad Muni? or they are 98 or 99% attached only? No, they are 100% attached. Okay? But the problem with all of them is that they have a Aishwarya Gyan Pradhanata. That is the difference. So, our Sampradaya, there are always some Sampradaya specific terminologies and definitions and Sri Rupa Goswami has defined Ragatmika Bhaktas as Vrajvasi Janadishu, as Vrajvasis. And the point he is trying to make is that those who have no trace of Aishwarya Gyan of Krishna. So he is not just taking that those who are fully attached, Ragatmika means fully attached from their innermost core, they are fully attached to Krishna, that is Ragatmika, but also who have no trace of Aishwarya Gyan Pradhanata. In the back of their mind, they may have it that yes, he is he may be a god, like you know, um, uh, you know, for some of you, your child, you know, some of you who are seniors, your child may be a big doctor, big professor. So mother will say, "Are you professor, a doctor? Hoga, apne apne doc, wahan pe of hospital mein. Mere liye to beta hai mera." Even Narendra Modi used to say that his mother would never treat him like prime minister. So, you know, Raja hoga to apne ghar ka hoga, mere yaha ka to tu ladka hai chota sa. Like that. So, that is the bhav. So, there, it's not like they don't, they may not at all even be knowing that he is God or he, but, but that is not at all in their considerations within the relationship. Okay? So, um, those who have this Aishwarya Gyan Pradhanata are not counted as Ragatmika Bhaktas in this Sampradaya specific definition. This Sampradaya specific or Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya only takes those who are fully attached to Krishna and have no trace of Gyan, Aishwarya Gyan of Krishna. And there is a good reason for this. It's not just that, oh, we just choose. Rupa Goswami flipped a coin and said, okay, no Aishwarya Gyan out. Not like that. There is very good reason for this. And I will, and that's because, you know, it comes from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who came to give the highest fruit from the tallest tree, as Hari Parshat Prabhu says. So what is that highest fruit from the tallest tree? Why is the knowledge of Aishwarya Jnana Pradhanata, that knowledge of Aishwarya Gyan, why is it not the highest uh, being or for a devotee? So let me go into that. And this brings us to the discussion of a formal versus informal God. So please pay very careful attention. This is an important 
discussion. And in this slide, you will see wherever, by the way, we use him, his, or whatever for God, we use capital H, right? Here, I'm going to use small h, deliberately. The informal God, please pay attention. So the core aspect of Vraj Krishna, Vraj Krishna is the informality in the dealings of Vrajvasis with him. Vrajvasis deal very informally with Krishna, inspired by the ignorance of his godly nature. They don't know he is God. They may think, oh, you know, Lord Vishnu is acting through him. When he lifted Govardhan Hill, or when he, you know, uh, uh, overpowered Kaliya, they said, oh, you have the power of Lord Vishnu invested in you. Through you, Lord Vishnu made it happen. Like that, they dismiss him uh, or his own Aishwarya uh, aspect. So, you know, as, as is evident throughout the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, the Vraj pastimes, you will see that in almost every single chapter, this point is hammered that even if he does all these big, big things, he kills Putana, he kills these big, big demons and all, the Vrajvasis, they, they are just, it seems they are so clueless. When first time I read, I said, how are they so clueless about the fact that he is Bhagavan? And why is it being stressed so much that he is not Bhagavan? You know, Bhagavan Shri Krishna, the one who spoke Bhagavad Gita, why don't these Vrajvasis get it? that he is Bhagavan. But that was the whole point, that they are not going to get it. And uh, Bhagavan wanted it that way, and he made sure that they never understand that he is Bhagavan. So this aspect of downplaying or outright rejecting the Aishwaratva of Krishna is present everywhere throughout the Vraj pastimes in the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. That is, in fact, the main theme uh, one of the main themes of the 10th canto is to uh, downplay his godliness by the Vrajvasis. Not for us, by the Vrajvasis. They downplay it. And to some people in the beginning level, it may sound surprising. Why is it? Because in Vraja, it allows Krishna to be fully human. In front of the Vrajvasis, he is completely a, like a human being. He is free to make mistakes and face consequences. Everybody is trying to get on the case of Shri Krishna, isn't it? The whole Vraja is like they are, you know, trying to find reasons to, to you know, chastise Krishna. All one time, you know, even his friends who would steal butter with him turned against him. When did they turn against him? Hmm? When Yashoda Mata got Mula? complaint. What? When Yashoda Mata got complaint from the neighborhood ladies. No, they then they were with him, the Gopas. Somebody else? The Mridbrakshan Leela Prabhuji when he was eating mountain. All the cowherd boys said, Yeah, yeah, he ate dirt, he ate dirt. Even Balramji turned against him. So everybody is trying to get on the case of Shri Krishna. Krishna is this victim. He is not a god. He is a poor victim. Okay. He, uh, he, he is like a powerless fellow uh, who is everybody is taking advantage of him. So that is the informal, that is the human Krishna in Vraj. So one who loves this kind of Krishna... loves him as a human being with all his faults, not as a God, he is the real devotee. He That is real love. Because when you love a powerless person, there is no motive. If you are loving a powerful person, maybe there is a motive. Or there is at least, if even if there is no motive, there can be some motive of bhukti or mukti. We have discussed this earlier in Sri Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu that they are being compared to whom? Come on, pop quiz. Bhukti and mukti are compared to? Which is? Pishachi. So, yes. So, um, 
first of all there could be some expectation but even if there is no expectation at least there is some kind of a formality some kind of a formalism there are certain limits etiquette when there is formal that's the whole point of being formal ha namaste ji kaise hain aap acche hain ha theek hai okay theek hai like you know formal abhi kaisa hai tumhe how do you say in uh, you know punjabi language that is the most sort of uh, uh, you know kind of raw language <laughs> so to say uh, you know when a punjabi person speaks it is hard to make out whether he is uh, really angry or he is uh, really being friendly oi dar ab as a <laughs> like that so something like that so very very informal there is no etiquette there is no uh, you know this thing uh, in that in that relationship so when somebody actually loves a person without any consideration of a title uh, so you know or a aishwarya upadhi and aishwarya i didn't didn't mention these two things aishwarya and upadhi so that is what creates that aishwaratva oh you are bhagwan you are the great i must you know behave nicely with you if not for any benefit at least to maintain that etiquette the protocol if that is not there then there is no etiquette no protocol there is full formality and that was the mood of the vrajvasis okay in in dwarka for example even if krishna does a mistake nobody will dare point it out here everybody is waiting to for krishna to make the smallest mistake and they will get on his case and krishna likes that so for vrajvasis krishna is the in, informal and imperfect human being for dwarka vasis krishna is the formal and perfect god even if he makes a mistake that becomes a law that it is a good thing <coughs> so he is the perfect god he can never make a mistake but for vrajvasis he is always imperfect even if he does something right people find fault with him so why is this so counter intuitive why does so what the question is what kind of god does krishna want to be does he want to be the perfect formal god or does he want to be the imperfect and informal human being which one so let us see that the answer is he wants to be that imperfect and informal and powerless human being not even a god just a human being why why is this concept so hard to get why does god not want to be god why is it so so why is it so hard for so hard for most people to understand this so the answer is that most people have not tasted real power they are always hungry for name fame power position etc and they will always think if i got this much power name fame i would be very happy and therefore they think that god who already has those powers those position why is he not happy with all that why he wants to become something lesser they cannot understand it they cannot fathom it but if you ask some people who have enjoyed a lot of power a lot of press, uh, name and fame in the society and a lot of popularity they will tell you it is not fun they always are in the spotlight in the microscope and they have to live up to other people's expectations their whole life is public they don't have a private life they cannot just enjoy life always they are the object of other people's enjoyment so they have to act like this perfect person and if you ask them they will tell you they want to be somebody unknown not famous they wish they were completely not famous and they don't have many friends because all the friends they have are their formal friends who are aware of their aishwarya very very few friends they will have who are not aware of their aishwarya or even if they are aware they don't give that much importance and krishna is hankering for that kind of genuine love 
and such devotees who love him with that informal informality are his dearest are the dearest to him he loves those devotees very much who 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 forget his aishwaratva therefore he is the hankering god very nice example of this was with the beatles if you know that three of the shila prabhupada's disciples mukunda goswami sham sundar prabhu and gurudas prabhu went and became just not out of any strategy or hidden agenda they happened to become friends with the beatles beatles can you imagine of the 1960s they were like i don't even know today's who all are there but they were like the gods of that time but the beatles told them that i'd like to hang out with you guys because you don't treat me like the beatles they would every day get some prasadam simple prasadam from the temple how opulent can temple prasadam be temple is not the world's most richest restaurant so they would get simple prasadam they would tell him simple things not like come i will take you in my chartered flight i will do this always expensive giving them expensive gifts nothing like that they weren't treating them like special but they were treating them like genuine friends and the beatles said this is what i like about you guys everybody else is just trying to be my friend they are not trying to be john lennon's friend or george harrison's friend they are trying to be the beatles friend they are trying to befriend the title not the person so here are some quotes you know harris i'll just flash this like you know i just thought, thought i'll in, in, inject this harrison ford says you know harrison ford you know you know very famous film actor the indiana jones and uh, what else star wars uh, actor he says i've never enjoyed it or enjoyed all this name and fame you can get the table you want in a restaurant it lets you go to doctors appointments but what's that worth nothing britney spears another famous uh, singer says it can be lonely at times you can never know who to trust and some people can be fake fake friends i have a very small circle of friends and i simply do what makes me happy then there is the you know from my time you know michael jackson so he says success definitely brings loneliness people think that you are lucky that you have everything they think you can go anywhere and do anything that's true but that's not the point one is hungry for the basic stuff people think they know me but they don't not really actually i am one of the loneliest people on earth i cry sometimes because it hurts it does the last sentence is kind of very Uh, touching he says to be honest i guess you could say that it hurts to be me in other words like it hurts to have the title that i have the name and fame that i have another king of pop elvis presley these are all like ultra famous names okay michael jackson elvis presley he says i feel so alone sometimes the night is quiet for me i'd love to be able to sleep i'll probably not rest i have no need for all this help me lord and most of these people die very young you know like elvis presley michael jackson they died they didn't live their full life and finally this quote by michael jackson i really liked he says i put a lot of mannequins mannequins are those things that you see in the stores you know on which dresses are put to show off the dress so like fake people so to say I still have mannequins in my room because I used to be very lonely, painfully lonely, so lonely you have no idea. I used to walk the streets looking for people to talk to. I'm talking about the height of one's career. He's saying this was at the height of his career and he named some albums Thriller, Bad and so on. These are like even till today they might be the you know the the blockbusters. I I used to listen to those those albums like every day like you know like a routine it was ultra famous uh and people i would walk up to them strangers and i would say will you be my friend and they would go oh my god it's michael jackson and then he says that's not what i wanted i wanted somebody to love me or be my friend for me not 
for the external me. So I hope you get the point that Krishna desperately wants to be the imperfect, powerless, informal human, not the omniscient, all-powerful, all-knowledgeable God. Okay? So you can get that sense. When this can happen to human beings, why not to Krishna? He is ultimately a person as well. So the last slide I will share is the summary. And by the way, please keep in mind that this discussion is highly specific to Gaudiya Vaishnava philosophy, but I'm explaining the logic behind it. It's not illogical that, you know, it is so because it is so. No reason. No, there is a reason. So I explained the reason, the reasoning in the last few slides. Hopefully you understood that. But please remember that this is a Gaudiya Vaishnava specific philosophy. There are other sampradayas that have different conclusions. They are perfectly happy in worshipping the godly god. There is nothing wrong with it. So don't go and tell them, oh, you are number two. You are, you know, silver medalists. We are gold medalists. Please don't do that. Okay. So don't, 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 don't do that. Just understand it because we are following Gaudiya Vaishnava philosophy. It is my duty to share this with you. <clears throat> so the point is, please, this is the summary that we should focus to develop or our focus should be to develop deep attachment and love for the human Krishna. This point you will see as you read the 10th canto, if you read it, you will see this, the Naratva. Naratva means humanness. The focus is always on the Naratva of Krishna, humanness. So Gaudiya Vaishnavism is all about developing love for this human Krishna. Keep his godliness aside. You know, you, you, you know it. You cannot undo it. You cannot reprogram your brain to forget that Krishna is God. But you got to keep, his, keep it aside. And you got to appreciate his fallible nature, his hankering. He also hankers for things. Otherwise, you know, what does God not have? The only one who will hanker is if he doesn't have something. God, by definition, has something. But our God, Krishna, does not have everything. Because he is human. Our God means Gaudiya in the Gaudiya Vaishnava philosophy. And we should develop deep, informal love for him. So, Ragatmika Bhaktas are those... So now we are connecting back to the original discussion of Vrajavasis. Why Vrajavasis? So Ragatmika Bhaktas in this definition are those who deeply and informally love the human Krishna with no Aishwarya Gyan. I hope that is clear. And in all of Vedic literature, the only such Bhaktas are found in Vraj. Please tell me if there is any other Bhakti you find. The answer will be no. I challenge you. And hence the term Vrajvasi Janadishu. So given this understanding of Ragatmika Bhakta, it is very natural that Sri Rupa Goswami is saying that such Ragatmika Bhaktas are the ones who are found in Vraja. Okay. Final points. Our job. So having understood this, having set this as our goal to develop this kind of love for that, that this kind of informal love for that human Krishna. What is our job? And this is the core summary of Raganuga Bhakti. I am telling you already. We will go into detail tomorrow. But this is the core summary. Each of these bullets translates into a verse. Which we will discuss tomorrow. We must internally. So there is two things. Internal and external. Internal one should appreciate the mood. The bhava of the Ragatmika devotees. Those devotees who have such informal love for the human Krishna, one should develop that mood, that bhava for such Krishna, for such a Krishna. And try to immerse into that bhava and try to serve those devotees, those Ragatmika Bhaktas, mentally. Now you cannot serve Mother Yashoda physically, can you? She's not there. Mentally, one must try to develop the bhav of the ragatmika of some specific ragatmika devotee and mentally try to serve them this is known as manasi seva in the siddha deha technical terms in the sadhak deha externally 
one should immerse in the activities of bhakti, not as a rule or regulation, but with a lot of love and devotion. The activities of bhakti don't change. Still, it is Nama Sankirtan, Bhagavat Shravan, Mathuravas, Murti Sevan, Sadhu Sangha, the five limbs. Still the same. But externally, they do that. But it is out of that internal disposition that they do that. And follow in the footsteps of previous Acharyas. Not by imitating Ragatmika Bhaktas. You know, this whole concept that becomes Prakrita Sahajiya. Men are trying to wear a sari and trying to think I am gopi and dancing and this and that. No. That should just be very internal bhava. Externally, one should follow in the footsteps of previous Acharyas. Srila Prabhupada never wore sari and danced or anything like that. So we must try to follow in the footsteps of, of our previous Acharyas like Srila Prabhupada and the entire parampara all the way up to Rupa Goswami and execute the limbs of bhakti externally and internally try to develop the bhava of a ragatmika devotee. So that is the end for today's class. That is the summary. Any questions? Okay. So I have two questions in the chat. There can be gradations, right? One can see Krishna as his close friend without much formality, but not having forgotten Krishna can cure problems. Not having forgotten Krishna. When Gopas, even Gopas, when they were engulfed by forest fire, they called to Krishna for help. Yeah, they called Krishna, but not as God, as their most uh, powerful friend. Okay, so they definitely the concept that he is God was not there. Just that he is the most powerful among us. And after some time it became like, yeah, somehow or the other he, he knows maybe this black magic. Or, you know, some, some, some special mantras he knows. Some tantra mantra, some magical words he knows by which he can kill demons. So let's rely on our, uh, you know, magician friend. Some this, uh, you know, black magic or powerful friend. Definitely not as God. So I think if that's what you were trying to ask, uh, um, uh, I answered that. Why do people generally not treat Krishna with informality? I told you already why most people have that problem. Why do they fear crossing rules and regulations and seeing Krishna with closeness? Because they are too much wrapped up in this uh, concept that, you know, I, I only should worship somebody great. So this will come with time. I think I already answered that question that why people have such a, I, I had this in the slide already, why people have such a hard time trying to, see, why is this why hard, so hard for most people to understand? I answered this question in this slide. Okay. If you have more question, you can rephrase it. Anything else? Okay. Thank you very much. So tomorrow we will continue with Raganuga Bhakti. I'm thinking we might complete Raganuga Bhakti section tomorrow, but we will see. Thank you very much. Jagat Guru Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Srila Rupa Goswami Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hare. Hare Krishna Prabhupada. Thank you Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Thank you Prabhupada. Thank you Prabhupada. Thank you Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhupada. Hare Krishna Mataji. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you, Mataji.